This is your early morning call. And this is your early morning punch in the neck. It's them. No question. Where's the woman? Can't see her. Shall we move in now? Too risky. We'll wait. For what? For the right moment. Mustn't make a mess of this. Don't worry. We won't. Ed, come on. We'll miss the start. We've got to leave. <laughs> 17 minutes ago? Please tell me we're not really going to this thing, Munro. Football's for savages. Ed, are you ready? This isn't just for fun, Julia. This is work. Work? Yeah, right. This happens to be part of an intensive field study into the crossover effects of multiple energy output on delta wave emissions, OK? Oh, whatever. Now, I've got a theory. We measure the energy given off by thousands of excited people, right? And we see how it triggers delta wave activity in the brain. And where better to find thousands of excited people than a football match? So we're not actually going for the football then? Get in the truck, wise guy. Ed! We are out of here now! Let's go! <sighs> where is that boy? Just waiting for you, Munro! Admit it, Munro, we're lost. We are not lost. It's a shortcut through the industrial state to join the ring road at Junction 3. In other words, we're lost. There, see, I told you. Ring road, turn left, O ye of little faith. who put a stunt like that. Very squashy, very nasty. I'm sorry to inconvenience you, but we'd like to test your fumes. I'm sorry? Your fumes, your, uh... Emissions. Yes, your exhaust fumes. Part of an environmental survey. <laughs> Government funded, of course. Won't take a moment. You want to examine my exhaust pipe? Oh, that would be marvellous. Lead the way. Right. Much appreciated. I say, I know it's a dreadful imposition, but you wouldn't do this bit, would you? It's just that I have this asthmatic condition that's exacerbated by chemical fumes. Thank you. If you just hold it down, Doctor. Come along. Oh, beautifully done. You have to come with me. What for? Please, don't argue. Hurry. Children don't go off with strangers. Don't you know anything? Okay. Happy now? Uh, no. Would you shake it for me for about 30 seconds, please? <sighs> what am I doing? You're doing wonderfully. What's going on here? 
Boy, what's going on? Nothing. What's your game? Nothing at all. It was, uh, a game, exactly. Just a little game, you know, to pass the time. Look, sorry to have troubled you. Thanks for your help. Got to dash. Must fly. Bye. Bye. Just wait a cotton-picking minute, guys. Where'd they go? I don't know. What was all that about? Who were they? Don't ask me, Ed. Let's get out of here. They freak me out. You should have said. It's never happened before. It was... It was weird. I don't know how to explain it. Can't we go? I think we should talk about it. Leave it, Munro. I'm fine. Honest, I'm fine. Tell Ed I'm sorry, OK? Never mind, Ed. He doesn't mind a bit. Ed, we're going. Now don't ask, just don't ask. What? Scrambled or fried? I'm having fried. You can have scrambled if you want. It's no trouble. I don't want anything. It's 6.15 and I want to go back to sleep. Monroe, scrambled eggs or fried? Julia! It's a lovely day, Ed. Life is good. Why waste it? Want some muesli? There's some strawberries in the fridge. What's going on? Isn't it a beautiful day? We should all be up making the most of it. Scrambled or fried, Monroe? Scrambled. Sit down. It won't be long. I'm going back to sleep. Ed, eat your muesli. Hey, can I help? No, thanks. Sit down, I'll bring it over. You seem very happy this morning. Why shouldn't I be happy? Uh, you just seem very happy, that's all. And you want to know the exact reason, right? No, I was only saying. I can't just simply be happy, can I? Oh, that's not what I meant, Julia. Yes, it is. You always have to know everything. That's not true. It's been this way for months. Every single day. Why am I happy? Why am I sad? What am I feeling? What am I thinking? Where am I going? What am I doing? Julia? I'm fed up with it, Munro. It's doing my head in. I'm happy, OK? Will you just stop messing around with my brain? No. I can't handle this. I'm out of here. Ed? I'll be outside stuffing my ears full of muesli. I do believe we are in business. Plan A, I think. Or perhaps Plan B? Plan A. Ready? Ready. I'm so glad. He's coming. Excellent. Get the feet. One more wink. The feet. Get the feet.
way don't stop. For pity's sake, what's he gawping at? He must have seen that car rolling away. Not very inconvenient. Mr. McClurg, hmm? that's our car. Perhaps I should retrieve it. That would be most helpful. You get the boy. It's a deal. Pushing things too hard, Julia. I'm sorry. You know what I'm like. I get a bit fanatical sometimes. It's me who's sorry, Monroe. I shouldn't have said what I said. It's just that I depend on you to tell me what you're thinking. I need your help. Don't allow your feelings to build up like this. Talk to me. It's just that... What? I've been having these weird... I don't know what to call them, really. These weird sort of... standing. But where's the car? Over there. Monroe, what does it mean? Oh, I don't know, Ed. Come on, let's get back. those two and me have a little chat, the better. You're crazy. You're both crazy. Julia? Oh, hi. What's going on round here? Hmm? Oh, there's got to be some kind of connection, Julia. Those bowler-headed freaks and the way you've been acting lately. What is it? Is there something you're not telling us? What? How many times do I have to say it? I'm fine. I'm happy. I've never been happier in my whole life. I feel fantastic. Fantastic! No. What's happening to me? Dinosaur. Lemonade. Very good. Excellent. Nylon. Concord. Concord? Don't get it. Nylon. A synthetic fibre painted in two cities, New York and London. NY and LON, therefore nylon. Connection, New York and London. Lots to choose from. Cultural, aesthetical, physical. The phone system connects NY and LON, but I need a single word. So I think direct supersonic flight, Concord. I could have plumped for the transatlantic internet, but net with nylon, too obvious. Concord, it's got to be Concord. Nothing wrong with you, kiddo. Monroe, can I try something out, please? I've just had a thought. First time's always the hardest. Monroe? What do you say, Julia? Whatever. Julia, concentrate, please.
No. You have to take me there. Stop here, Monroe. Julia, where are you going? Ed, wait. Well, let her be. Why? Because I say so. Afternoon. Hi. Welcome to Dottie Crookshank's Music Emporium. I'm Dottie Crookshank. This is my emporium. That shop to you and me. Shop, right. Yeah. I know it seems a shambles, but shambolic, I assure you, it is not. Watch. Austin 7 Motorhorn in F sharp. <laughs> there, you see? I can lay my hand on anything. If I have it and you want it, you've got it. Now then, what do you want? I don't know. You're right. I am looking for something, but I don't know what. Perhaps I can help you. It's just... coming here. I had to. It's important. Go on. It means something. Go on. Trust your feelings. I'm trying. Don't try. Be free. It's just instinct, that's all. Nothing to be afraid of. You must just... let loose. We are busy today. Good afternoon. Tube is upstairs, pick loose in the basement. Just looking for a friend. She plays wonderfully. I didn't even know she could play. Goodness gracious me, that's a whole one. You know what it is? Oh, I haven't heard that since I was a little girl. <laughs> oh. Mm -hmm. This brings back some memories. What is it? <laughs> oh, yes. I have it. That's easy. Right here. And this is the man who made this wonderful tune world famous. Dinsdale Drake. Oh, what a dancer he was. He was the most sublime... No, he was more than sublime, he was magical. He was the most magical dancer I ever saw. When Dinsdale Draco tripped the light fantastic... Oh, it was as if time itself stood still. Of course, that was way back in 1935. I wonder what ever's happened to him. He's still dancing. It's going to go green in three, two, one. No drive, please! What in the name of... <laughs> Looks like a puncture. Looks like four punctures. It could happen. It has happened, Ed. And I don't like it. What are we waiting for? Come on, we're almost there. I'm going to get help. You two stay with the truck. Oh, Monroe! Stay here, Julia. I'll be back.
Julia, please. Come on, I'll show you around. Coming here is going to change your whole life, Julia. I don't understand. This way. Oh, you'll do very nicely. Very nicely indeed. <laughs> Can I help you? Those two men. Where'd they go? Uh, which two men in particular, madam? They just walked through the door ten seconds ago. Many people walk through that door, madam. Why, you yourself have just walked through it. You saw them. You must have seen them. They're wearing pinstripe suits and bowler hats. <coughs> Ten-year-old boy with them, probably in tears. They hijack the truck and then they kidnap dead. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Don't pretend you don't. There is something deeply weird going on around here, and I'm not budging from this spot until I find out what it is. You know who I'm talking about, and you know exactly where they are. So pick up that phone and tell them to get their ugly mugs out here now. Thank you. One moment, please. Mr. Mackenzie and Mr. McClurg say they'll be happy to see you. Mackenzie and McClurg? And what's their story? They say they'll be delighted to explain everything, Dr. Munro. How do you know my name? Who are you people? Please, take a seat, Dr. Munro. As I said, they will be with you directly. I didn't catch your name, Shelley. Of course. I knew that. It's just along here. What are you doing? Just looking. Why don't you come and say hello to the others? What is all this? Come on, Julia, let's go. By the way, can you dance? Dance? Aren't they great? Yeah, terrific. Come on, come and join in. You've got to be joking. I can't. Shelly, no. Come on, you know you want Do this. 
You were sensational. You think so? You're a natural, Julia, honestly. You were born to do this. Everybody, I'd like you all to say a big hello to Julia Stone, who's come to join us. Hi, Hi Julia. Julia. You you know, know, it, was uh, it was really interesting to meet you guys, but um, I have some friends waiting and... Come on, Julia, this way. I'll show you your room. What room? Hi, 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 Hi Julia! Hi, Julia! Hi, Julia. Hi, Julia. Pardon me? You said they were coming. And come they will, Dr. Munro. Perhaps a cup of tea while you wait? I've waited long enough. <laughs> Dr. Munro, come back! You can't go up there! Where's Ed? What are you doing? These offices are private. Come in, Dr. Munro. Please, have a seat. Or if you'd rather stand, that's fine. Where's Ed? Sorry, can't help you there. That's classified information. There's no need for that kind of behaviour. Yes, there is. Bring me the boy or your friend here is in the filing cabinet under D for dead. That's quite enough. Put him down, please. I do believe an apology may be in order, Dr Munro. Why should I say sorry? Uh, no, I mean from us. It's possible we may have been a trifle indelicate in our efforts to protect the children. <coughs> You're right down there, Mr. McClurg. Yes, thank you. Fine, Mr. McKenzie. Protect the children? What do you want about? Protect them from what? From you, if you must know, Dr. Munro. From you. Yes, we were misled, weren't we, Mr. McClurg? An understandable error, Mr. McKenzie. Hmm. Are they in some kind of danger? Sorry. Confidential. Where's the girl, Dr. Munro? What's going on here? Who are you people? We are acting in the children's best interests, I assure you. Now, what happened to Julia? Tell us. I don't know. Oh, dear. Oh. Somebody's after Julia and Ed. No comment. Why them? Something to do with their special powers? Definitely no comment. So, who is this somebody? What's it all about, eh? Not telling. Why not? Because you don't know, right? Okay, you, bring me Ed. Oh, not possible. That child is in my care. I have his parents' authority. He's quite safe with us. Wait a minute. I know what you're up to. You're going to use Ed as a decoy, aren't you? Don't know what you mean. Yes, you do. He's a small boy. You can't, it's too dangerous. I won't let you. Show Dr. Munro the door, would you, Mr. McClurg? This is the door, Dr. Munro. I suggest you use it. <coughs> the exit is that way, Dr. Munro. So it is. Thanks a million. we can have them changed. I wasn't planning on staying. That's what I thought at first. But you'll change your mind once you've come to know Mr. Draco. I'll see you later. Look hard. deep into your soul. 
I do believe you'll soon be ready, Julia Stone. Ripe for the picking. And all your power will be mine. Yes, oh yes. The time will soon be right. Julia? What's the sticky bun situation? Oh. Well, now, look you here. We got sticky. We got sweet and sticky. We got sticky with cream. We got sticky with jam. We got very, very sticky. We got hardly sticky at all. Take it back, really, boy, sir. Sticky with cream, Mr. M, or sticky with jam? Mm, sticky with jam, I think. Mm. Make that too sticky with jam, would you? A very wise choice, if I may say so, gentlemen. Mm. What about something for the boy? What for? Well, everybody has to eat. That's very true. Uh, look, you, uh, boys love sticky buns. He'll enjoy that. Uh, where is he? I'll take it to myself if you want. Oh, thank you, thank you. I'll take it. Anyway, as I was saying, Mr. McClough, we must tread on eggshells. Using the boy as bait, it's a very risky strategy. Fish foot, Mr. McKenzie. Sprat to catch a mackerel. Oh, I'm sorry, my dear. I didn't mean to startle you. Mr. Draco. I hear you had a spot of trouble with the dance steps. What? Nil desperandum, as they say, never despair. Dinsdale Draco is here to show you the way. You see, dancing is a little bit like life itself, my dear. It appears to be frightfully difficult, but really, it needn't be. Let me demonstrate. A shuffle, hop, step, a shuffle, hop, step, a one, a two, a three, a four, ba -ba. There. You see, it's simple. Now, you try. A one, a two, a... No? Oh, maybe later. Hmm? Mr. Draco, do you mind if I ask you a question? How old are you? Never ask a dancer his age, Julia. He'll only tell you a big fat fib. How old? Twenty-one. There, you see, I lied. You were dancing fifty years ago. Sixty years ago. I saw your picture. You haven't changed at all. Oh, you flatter me, my dear. It's not possible. Nevertheless, here I am. I don't get it. Julia! I understand how you feel. I do. Believe me, of course I do. There you are, going about your business, and all of a sudden there's music in your head. The next thing you know, you're here, in some tumble-down backstreet dancing school full of weirdos. It's a puzzle, correct? Correct. Come now, Julia. The truth. You honestly don't know what drove you to come here? I had to. Exactly. And why? I don't know anything about anything, Mr. Draco. Oh, very strange statement from someone with your outstanding gifts. You must have sensed by now that you and I are soulmates. Among the chosen few. Both of us born with the same extraordinary talents. Of course. You know... You were one of the lucky ones, Julia. You seem happy to be blessed with these great powers. Others find this phenomenal gift to be more of a curse. I mean, you might not believe it, but they simply cannot function as normal human beings. Happiness seems to them completely out of reach, over there somewhere, way beyond their grasp. And why? Because they see themselves as freaks. <laughs> You don't see yourself as a freak, do you, Julia? Well, even if you do, sometimes, occasionally, it's not so bad, is it? I mean, after all, it's a small price to pay, surely, for being so special. To be alone, 
forever. Oh, my dear. I seem to have upset you. Oh, you mustn't listen to me twittering on like a fool. My good heavens, it's not as if you regret being born with psychic powers, is it? so troubled with the way things are. Julia, I can help you. I want to help you if you'll allow me. You see, I can take away the pain. I can free you from all of this. Do you want my help, Julia? Do you? Yes. Julia, don't do it! No! I say, you all right in there? Attention seeking Mr. Mackenzie, that's all. Would you care for a sticky bun, young man? No, just say no, Ed. Don't say no, Ed. Take the bun. I think once you see it, you'll change your mind. Mr. McLean, the key. Hmm? You mustn't be afraid, my dear. It's all perfectly harmless, quite without pain. You'll feel nothing. Nothing at all. Believe me. What will happen to you? Your powers. Don't worry. After this day is done, they'll never trouble you again. You'll be at peace, Julia. At peace. Forever. But where will they go? They can't just vanish, can they? Are you comfortable? Where will they go? You have absolutely nothing to worry about, Julia. I am your friend, remember? I will take your pain and suffer for you. Why? Because nothing in the world is more important to me than your complete happiness.
Viva la Lana, she will die. Do something, now! You mad woman. You don't know what you're doing, leave her alone! Are you all right? Just about. Are we in time? Apparently not. What's been happening here? Found your kidnapper, guys. I say, well done, you! Dinsdale Draco. Who? Not who, what? A psychic vampire. An arrest, then, I think, Mr. Mackenzie. You do the honors, Mr. McClurg. I don't think you'll be needing those, Mr. McClurg. There's just one thing I don't understand. How come you said yes? What do you mean? To Draco. You know, when he asked you to give up your powers. Yeah, I was wondering that too. I don't know. Seemed like a good idea at the time, I suppose. Are you really that unhappy about being different? Leave Julia alone. It's a fair question, Monroe. It deserves an answer. Well? I said it deserved an answer, and I didn't say you were going to get one. Julia! Edward. A word of wisdom from one who knows. Sometimes, to be one of the many is as desirable as to be one of the few. Right, Julia? Right, Monroe. What's that supposed to mean? Then again, on the other hand, sometimes to be one of the few is even better. Right, Monroe? Right, Julia. Or not, depending on who you are. Or on who you aren't. Exactly. <laughs>